Yo, what's up guys, Say Chronicles here, and a topic I've been asked about to make a video about for quite a bunch of time already, but for me it's actually kind of straightforward, but also kind of, well, if there's a lot of questions about it, I guess a video is kind of useful. So, skill ups, and where to put your skills and all of that kind of stuff. So I will showcase it for all three characters. I'm mainly familiar with Orbia, so I'll first talk about Orbia, and actually where to get the skill ups, because that might be not that familiar with people as well. But skill ups, uh, there's a bunch of things. Like, first, let's just glance over what do we see over here. First, we have the actives, which are on the left side, which are just your actual skills. You're probably familiar with them, so they switch through all the elements. And at the bottom, we have utilities, um, which include a few utilities, which are must level, and then afterwards, a bunch of PvP stuff. And we have a bunch of passives. Uh, a few of them are good, a few of them are very niche. And now we have the attribute research, which is just boosting the damage for those specific elements. So those are the four. There's not specifically saying like, okay, one is much better than the other. Um, something that you could focus on or not focus on is, for example, there's a bunch of them that are PvP only. This one, this one, and these ones are just PvP focused. So if you don't really care about PvP, you can kind of slack out on. What do you have to know about skill ups? Well, first of all, let's talk about where do you get them? Because that, you might not actually be that familiar with where do you get them mostly. The main thing is you get them from expeditions. And from expeditions, you can see that you can get these uh, skill ups right away. But you can also get them from the research pieces if you actually craft them into something. So, for example, if you do the level four of the one that daily rotates, you can get like eight pages right away. You can do a bunch of extra refreshes. The first one is 200, second one is 300, and the third one is 400. So, in total, there will be 900 crystals to refresh this every day. That's pretty costly. So, I would recommend to at least do 200, which means you can do a double amount of runs. If you are okay on your crystals, do that one for 300 as well. And if you're kind of wailing and spending quite some, I would recommend to do the 400 as well. So that's pretty much the difference between like how many times should you refresh it. But this one, since we're not getting that much from this one, because in the NA server, you could do this like 20 times per day and you could refill it. We're not getting many of these. So we actually have to get pretty much all of our skill ups from this one. It is pretty recommended to refresh this. Because skill ups actually give a good amount of power as well. Because if you check, for example, my Orbia, I have quite a bunch from the skill ups in here. Because every skill that I add right now, they cost about like 20 to 30 skill points, though they add also like 400, 500, no, 300 to 400 power. But the moment they get more expensive, I think they start adding more as well. So you get them mainly from there. There's a few more places where you can get skill ups um, bought as well. If I'm not mistaken, you can get them from Ascension Shop. Yeah, you can buy them over here as well. But I don't recommend to do that. I would highly recommend to use these to get your power of Ascension. So yeah, pretty much the only spot is Expedition. So kind of recommend to focus on that. A good thing to know is that if you have the quests of Expeditions and if you haven't done them on the other characters yet, Always check daily which one is open and if you did do them on the other characters already. Because you get another uh, ticket for those. But also if you clear them, you get these five of those. And you can do this on every character. And we have like, what, four of them. So that means like 20 skill ups per character. So that's another 60 skill ups that you probably didn't do. Like, well, let's say you didn't do it on the other character, so just 40. So that's definitely something you want to do. Okay, then let's dive into the thing that's actually the interesting part of this video. What skill ups do you want to do? Well, first of all, I'm actually going to explain that you can't really go too wrong on these skill ups, in all honesty. Especially early on, you can reset this thing for free. Currently, it's going to cost me 100k to reset it. It's not that expensive, but I feel like it's not that much value to reset it. I think that you could say, like, okay, you go wrong in it. It's saying, like, okay, I use my S2 a lot because, let's say, Wind Orbia S2 armor breaks. I'm just going to toss like all skill ups in this one and I go straight for the one that costs like 180. Yeah, that's the point what you don't really want to do. The best thing you can do is kind of spread it out because you can see here, for example, this one only costs 15. Whereas if I want to up this one, it's 30 or I want to up this one is 43. So I kind of recommend to just buy the things that are cheap. Exactly for those, like this one is just a straight up damage up when being in that specific element. It is not that useful. Even if they are cheaper, it's not that interesting because you're not using that element at all, like all the time. I have mine on 
uh, wind a little bit higher because I use mainly wind actually. So you could check like, okay, I can do maybe like three or four in that one, depending on which level you are, how many skill points you have. Um, but what are the things that are actually, especially when you're level 60, must buy? So what are like absolutely the best things you can buy? Well, best thing you can buy is this one. Always when you can up this, up this one because it's just adding extra mana. It's just an attribute damage. up. That's one is just very good. Another one that you always want to get is the evasion. Evasion is just very good the moment you can buy or you can upgrade this one. Same thing for lowering the evasion cool time. Very good one. Um, charges of mana to 10 is very important. Charges every three seconds is very important. And then ultimate is less important. So the most important that you can buy are these four over here. And then this one. I would say those are absolutely the most interesting to buy for all three characters. But then there's one very important as well. Changing your soul link every one second. You can only buy this when you're level 60 because I think it goes up to four seconds if you're not level 60. But the moment you're level 60, definitely buy this one because one second soul link switches are very useful because you can use that to, for example, you have a specific unit, you're spamming E, you switch it away, it uses its Q from just the cool time, you switch it back and you can start spamming the E again. So definitely something you want to buy. So it's these fives and this one on pretty much every character. Afterwards, looking at Orbia specific things, what are useful? Well, if you're into PvP, I would definitely max out those three as well. Or no, it's mainly just this one and this one. This one is less interesting because a revive of like that long. It's so long, it's not going to happen. Ulti is pretty nice. Um, other passives that are pretty good. You kind of want to start adding in everything in the passives at some point. So I kind of would recommend to go for your skills maybe around like five or six. And then you kind of want to max out most of the passive, especially this one. The magic shield is very strong because that is when you get lethal damage, you get a shield for both your monsters and yourself, which is very strong. This one is also pretty strong. That's also that you get like less damage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like the spell shield and that kind of stuff. This one is also pretty strong. Like a lot of these passes are pretty strong. And you have this one, for example, like the resistant damage against the boss. It's not that interesting, but this one is pretty cheap, so therefore I would just get it like the moment you can level it pretty much. Uh, this one is very good as well. So uh, Shield Crush is definitely something I recommend to get early on as well, because you get a death break just like on random occasions pretty much. Well, you have to crit for it, but it's pretty easy to get, and you lower the cool time on that. This one I feel like is less interesting because I notice my RBS most of the time at like max HP until she just pretty much drops to zero, so... This one could be useful here and there, but I feel like it's not worth my 15 right now because I'm currently saving for probably the S3 or an S1 of the 30. This one is pretty nice as well. Um, accuracy up, that's definitely something you want to take in. So as you can see here, everything is kind of nice. And all of those things are like, there's a few that I would say like are less interesting, like just straight up boss damage up. I feel like it's less interesting. Um, this thing, for example, I feel like it's less interesting. Um, this one, I feel like it's slightly less interesting, but all of the others are pretty much just straight up good. Same for all of your skills, like your normal skills, they're pretty good. As one skill, I feel like it's somewhat slightly weaker, but actually you spam as one most of the time. So it would be nice to up this as well. But yeah, you can't really up everything, but you can see like how big of a jump it is. Like it's 10% damage up on the S1. And you can also see here for like these damage ups are pretty big. So I definitely do want to level that at some point as well. The main thing is buy everything that's cheap and skip out on a few things you care less about. That, that's actually the best answer I can give for this. And a few things to skip out on is this one you can kind of skip out on. These you don't have to level that high. I feel like this one is still interesting, but for me currently slightly less interesting. And then this one is also slightly less interesting. But in the end, at some point, I'm going to max this one, max this one. This one probably still not, these one probably still not, and then I'm going to focus on these. So I'm kind of currently kind of on the point where I think with like 750 to 800, you max out pretty much all of your passives and all of your utilities, and then you start working on your active skills. That's how I did it. And the main reason why I do that is because it's just cheaper this way. Because if I start going right away for saying like, okay, this skill is very good because it ups the death break rate and the death break duration. And I start throwing like 180 in this. My passives are really going to lack, which you absolutely don't want.
So yeah, that's my recommendation for Orbia. Let's move on to the other character. So at the Cleave, my Cleave is even lower level than my Kina, so I don't have everything maxed here yet. I did actually do this one and this one and this one, which is kind of useless. So I'm actually going to, for Cleave, I'm just going to reset everything right now. And I'm actually going to upgrade in the order that I feel like is the best to do. I have 300 uh, skill points, so you might have less. But this one is definitely very interesting. You want to max this out for sure, which is the extra mana, right? Yep, extra mana, but I can't max it out yet because I need level 60. This one, extra evasions, is definitely something you want to get. Lower cool time on the evasions is definitely something you want to get. Uh, this one is extra mana, 100% a must to have. Lower cool time on the mana is definitely something you want to max. And you definitely want to start maxing this one with the soul link switches already. Because that's just very good, even though that this one is more expensive. And at level 60, I would max it all the way. Because one second soul link switches are just insanely good. So afterwards, you could do like one level in those because they're just like that cheap at that point. So it's just two each. So I would probably do that. And then I start checking like, okay, what kind of things are useful for uh, passives? You could do one charge and ulti because it's just super cheap, like in the early levels. PvP, I'm not going to care about. But for this one, like you can see early thing, it's, it's everything is cheap. And I mostly say just buy everything that's cheap. So in this case, I would definitely buy at least one of everything. That's definitely a good way to go. And then actually start checking in like, okay, what are the useful things that I feel like are good? So in the case of skills, you could say like, oh, this skill, I use it a lot. I'm going to Hala max it and stuff. Wouldn't really recommend to do it. I kind of recommend to go for like, okay, everything costs three. So therefore we just buy like one level in each. And then maybe we do at the current level we're at, we can actually do like maybe level two or probably even level three. So let's see for the passes, which are good. So if caster is below 70% HP, as a cleave, it's actually more likely to be below 70% HP than it was for the other two characters. But still, if you're doing a specific raid, you're most of the time full HP until you're actually dying. Most of the time in most content, you're like 100% HP anyways. But the moment you're dying, you kind of can use those. But Monster death up when your HP is lower. I'm not really sure if that's that useful. But then again, like if your HP is above a certain threshold, getting extra rest, well, rest, I'm not sure if that's that useful. Reflect, okay. Gas is below defense up, that sounds pretty decent. Gas is below 30%, remove all harmful effects, that is very good. If the caster takes lethal damage and dure for 8 seconds, this one is very good, especially for PvP, but also PvE kind of stuff. The targets provoke damage up, okay, and then damage down. That one is very good as well because that happens all the time. You kind of want to look at things like how often does it happen? And this one, for example, it doesn't happen all the time. And uh, but then again, if you see like for example this one, I would definitely say like this is something you want to max out at some point. It's quite costly, but I think that one is very good. Same for this one, is very good. So I would do this. I would do that. And in the end, like, you can't really go wrong. Like, if you just buy everything one level at a time and you just keep, like, everything level one and then everything level two and then everything level three, you're totally good to go. Because at some point you could say, like, okay, uh, this one is maybe good, so I just want to add in, like, the 15 and the 25 in it. But for that 25, you could have as well up, like, pretty much, what, four other things. So yeah, then it's kind of debating like, okay, do I want to go 25 in one or four other things on a six? That's, that's kind of what you're looking at. So I kind of recommend to just app everything like step by step, going like a step at a time and maybe see like one or two is like seeing like, okay, I don't really get below 50% HP or this doesn't really happen too often and therefore I level that one later or maybe I keep it one level lower or something like that. So in this case, I think I can go for a level four on all of these. I can do this one, one higher, level two ult is fine for me. Um, these ones are not that interesting. In this case, I think I will up that one. Oh, yeah, that was just a 15, so that one's pretty good to go. I think this actually happens quite some of the time as well with provokes. And then the last one that I... Like, to be honest, at some point you're... As my Orbia is, you have all of these max. So which order you really do them in, that doesn't really matter all too much. You're going to get at the point where you have all of these maxed. 
and all of these maxed. Like especially having this one maxed and these four and then this one maxed. Very important. What you do afterwards is kind of like min maxing like what you think is useful or something like that. But I think every you can't really go like very wrong in this. Like the only thing how you can go very wrong in this saying like okay, I reset it and I throw everything in my skill too. Like if I just put like 300 points in skill two and I don't level everything else. That's I think the only way you can actually really go wrong with this. So don't be too afraid. Just spend your skill points. If if it's super bad at some point, you can still refresh it. It's 100k, like it's not the end of the world. So Kina in this case, my Kina is level 60. And here you can see kind of more of a messy skill tree where a lot of things are less skilled. I am no longer able to reset it because the moment of level 60, you can reset everything. But as you can see, I'm still mainly focusing on the passive. I didn't level too much into the skills. It just did like about four. I didn't do too much into these except for the ones that I was actually actively using. Um, maybe these are not that interesting as well. But as you can see, evasion is maxed. That one is very interesting. Getting extra mana. This one is very interesting. Extra evasion is interesting magic up is interesting or yeah mana up is interesting so these four again these four are good this one is good this one the soul link which i also explained on the orbia side is very good definitely something you want to have and then you kind of start filling in like okay what kind of passives do i think are good in the case of kina i'm not going to pvp on it so i skipped out on all of these i don't really care about those ulti i didn't do that much in but you can start getting a little bit more of ulti as well and then you can start kind of getting in like, okay, which ones of those passives do I find useful? And once again, same thing as with Orbia, you buy everything that's cheap. So if something like, for example, uh, this one is already maxed out. Oh yeah, this one is pretty good because I think you get like above 90% HP most of the time. Especially if there's like specific things for monsters, you definitely want to get those. So let's actually just go over it. The caster is below 30% HP. I feel like that doesn't happen all too much unless you're actually PvPing. So this one feels less interesting for me. Um, this one is if your team monster is defeated. Also something that I feel like if that happens, like maybe in TOA Spires, that kind of stuff. But most of the time you're kind of fine. Again, like these things that if caster is below certain point, that is something that's just going to happen if you're nearly dead which is more pvp related than pve related at least i feel that way so i focus less on the well this one I actually kind of focused on a little bit because i needed it for the toa 200 that i was doing so and especially since uh you also have the decrease of the monster cool time this one is actually pretty good so then we also have caster below like th this for example if caster is below 30 percent hp if kina is below 30 percent hp you get like monster damage up I think you're pretty much dead the moment that happens like not gonna lie so yeah there, there's just a bunch of these passives that are pretty good the moment you feel like okay i have all of the passives that are useful for me for sure first get this one these four and this one and then you can start working on the skills that you feel like okay these skills are best for me but most of the time you kind of want to do like four in those maybe three and three and then five in those and then four and four that's kind of how i level so let's move on to the next one also if i I haven't really mentioned it for the Kina, but I mentioned it more in the Orbia. These are just like straight up like damage ups if you're in a specific element. Those are less interesting. Like for example, this one on the four is not really that interesting and they get kind of expensive as well. So these one are, you can kind of slack out on. If you don't care about PvP, you can kind of slack on those as well. If you do care about PvP, I would max out this one and I would max out this one. But this one you can still kind of slack on because this it, it just lowers the cool time, but it's still too long that you can actually be that useful, in my opinion. Like at some point you want to max it out for battlefields, I guess. But even then, battlefields, you just revive your units. It's less interesting still. But yeah, those are my recommendations for skill-ups pretty much. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a thing or two. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one.